Welcome back. Now, we're going to go over functions here. So now this is going to be a major turning point in our programming career. So basically, everything that we've been doing in the past few lessons have been inside this main function here. Notice this int main has been just sitting there in our program, but we really didn't know what it's been doing. All we knew that it had it has to be there. Well, um, now uh, we're going to go and create new functions. We're going to be using new functions here. Now, before I begin here, just I'd like um, for you to make sure that you have a lot of the C++ keywords down here. Now, keep in mind that a C++ keyword here is something that lights up in blue. Is when you start typing it in, it lights up in blue here. And don't worry so much about these two up here. But make sure you have the int, the int down here. We know all the variable types: boolean, char. Uh, what else did we have? We had double. We had float. We had enumerations. Actually, we didn't go over that. But just most all the ones that we went over. You know the return. You know all that does. All we know about the return is it has to be here at the at the bottom here. But just the other keywords. You know uh, the the if statement. Is a keyword the while uh, the for now the for loops are fairly new to us but um, we have a pretty good idea how it works it's a fancy while loop here you can always use a while loop in place of a for loop but with a for loop you have um, a scope visibility thing when you when you create a variable inside the for loop we'll be dealing with some scope here now um, I, so I expect you to basically have everything I'm um, pretty fairly mastered, pretty much mastered, except for the rules of scope here. So the last two videos are just introduction to the rules of scope here, and now we're going to be going over scope in these next several tutorials here. So, and I don't expect you know with the rules of scope here, it shouldn't make complete sense yet because I haven't really gone over everything about the scope yet. That's going to be covered in these next tutorials here. So now we're going to begin our functions here. So first, let's go over. A variable again. So if a variable here, we know that when we create a variable, when we declare a variable here, we have to give it a type. It could be int, it can be boolean, it can be double, it can be float, it can be all these different things here. So let's say we make a variable and we give it a name. Well, this can be, this name can be anything here. We just don't want to give it a name that has the same thing as a keyword here. We don't want to give this, we don't want to call an int an int here because it's a C keyword. We don't do that. So we're going to give it a name that does not require C a C keyword here. So let's call it, you know, we can call it anything here. So just the same thing with a function here. So this is going to be our first function here. We have to give it a type. Let's say we give it a type of double. Okay. So we're going to declare a function of the type double. Now, we give our function a name. So let's call this one first a function here. Now notice it can't be spaces, just like the rules of um, the variables here. We're going to go open parentheses and close the parentheses here. So all our functions here have to have an open parentheses and a closing parentheses here. That's just the rule. Then uh, we'll make an opening and closing brace here. So what we have here, it, we just declared a function here, but we're not done yet. So if it, it shouldn't make sense right now because we're still, still just blah, we're still not done yet making the function here. So basically, let's say I have a code here that says I'm um, I am forever smart 88. I'm going to make a new line here. Notice it's together here, and I'm going to say um, welcome to the world of functions okay so basically we have code here right we can put all our code in here we can make variables we can make while loops we can use all our standard coding procedures in this function here uh, basically I'm just going to start off with this here to keep things simple here just to show you what we're going to be doing now finally the function is not complete yet we have to, every function has to have a return value so the function that we we need a return 
something here. In this case, the, the value that we return has to match the type here. In this case, let's say I make it 2.718. So this is a type of double here. So this guy here has to match this type here. For instance, if I made this, let's say I made this a boolean here. This would have to be a true or a false. Because that, that's the only rule. It has to match the type here. Now I can make this an 8 here. And remember, we already know the rules of the boolean here. If we return an 8 here, it's going to be considered true because any other value that's not 0 is going to be considered true here. Just to keep it easy on the compiler here, not that it really matters. We're, I'm just going to make it true. Just to stay consistent here. So the boolean here has to match the return type here. So the return type is a boolean here, and I'm going to give it a boolean here. So, alright, let me delete this variable here. Now, if I run this, what do you expect to happen here? I already told you way in the first lesson here. Because this is, this is our very first code, I think. The Hello World program. If I run this here, what do you think it will happen? Because I already told you that the compiler will read just one line of code at a time. One piece of code at a time here. Well, if I told you that, you would expect to see this thing executed first here, right? Well, now our circumstances have changed here. So now, it just executed the main function here. Why does it only execute the main function here? I thought it read every line of code. Well, it does read every line of code here. However, the C++ compiler will always enter the main function first, regardless of what's up here. So I could have functions above, I can have a thousand functions created that are up here. I can have, you know, another thousand below that, but regardless of the order here, it'll always enter the main function first. Okay? That's the rule. So, knowing that here, well, how do we use functions here? What's the point of making a function here? Well, let me show you what we can use here. We can call this here. Let's say we delete this here. first function open closing parenthesis here well now this is going to be considered a program statement here what I called here is the name of my function up here so let me run this now so okay so we have here it says I am forever smart welcome to the world of functions here notice it's on two lines here and we can see how the uh, this is the code here that it printed out it printed off a new line after that and once it hits the return statement here, so basically when I call this function here, it goes straight up to here. And then it executes everything inside that function here. And when it hits the return type here, it breaks out of the function and goes back into the main back into the main function here. That's how it works. So it went back into the function that it was called in. In this case it was the main function. And then, um, then once we break out that main function, next we're still waiting on the, comp the program for me to use something. So right here, just to show you an example here, I can say, hello world here. Hello world. And I want to put a new line here. And then um, I can say, um, um, well, and say something else here. Couldn't think of anything else to say. And um, let's say I want to output a new line though anyway because my function doesn't end with a new line here. This is just an example. So it says hello world I am forever smart 88 here. So first thing it does it goes straight to the main function here. It prints out hello world then it executes everything in this function whatever it may be. Then we output something else here. So it's it's kind of a silly function here. It only prints the some things to the screen here. But um, we can we can do all kinds of things here, and that's that's basically it on these functions here. And uh, it might be it might seem a little useless here. You might be thinking, well, I could just type this in anyway all in the main function here. Well, well we'll see the use of functions here. It can help us 
keep things organized here. And with the rules of scope here, we can only we'll limit ourselves to looking only at a couple variables here within functions instead of looking at every single variable created as a whole. But um Yeah, that's that that will help us actually because we don't want to have access access to every single variable because we might grab the wrong one. And it's easy to do here. So if we're only using a certain variables here, we're going to restrict the number of variables that we will use here. And when we uh, write some code here. So we already <coughs> we already seen a few examples of code here. And um I want to show you a couple other things on functions here. I'm going to show you many other things actually, but uh, something else here, I'm going to give you a, uh, a practical example of the use of a function here. And we'll be using functions probably throughout the rest of the, the tutorials here because they're, they're useful, they're important here. So we're going to have several different functions probably from here on out here. But don't, but don't worry, it actually makes things easier 